start our new study on the books of first and second Thessalonians. We had a wonderful time going through Romans for a year and now we'll start these two letters which are very important for the church in general, and also particularly for the church that's living today. Um, the importance of these books are found, is found in the content that it is easy to find very applicable for the church today. The church of Thessalonica had a great beginning and Paul praised this church for several ways. And as we go through the subjects, as we go through the verses and chapters, we'll find how important these teachings are for us in order to realize that what pleases God and what does not please God. The scripture that Christine read this morning is how this church was born. This church was born not just like, you know, something just happened. It has, there was a progress until this happened. And this is the progress that is also important for us to grasp to understand what Paul is saying, why Paul is saying what he's saying in the letters. We know that the way Paul arrived to the city of Thessalonica was in a miraculous way because it was not his plan and the plan of his team, which included Dr. Luke, included future pastor Timothy and the fellow apostle Silas. Together they were in modern day in Turkey and they planned to go to Asia. However, the Holy Spirit stopped them. They tried to go somewhere else. The Holy Spirit stopped them. And then Paul had a dream that a man from Macedonia is asking him to cross over and go and help them. So immediately the evangelical team crossed from the Middle East into Europe. And that's how the gospel came into Europe. Paul and his team went to one of the major towns called Philippi. That's where he went. Was preaching the gospel with his team, was preaching in his synagogues, and he was encountering all kinds of people, including a young lady who practiced witchcraft. 
This young lady kept following Paul and his team and trying to make fun of Paul. And she did it so much that Paul got so upset that he turned and commanded the spirit to leave her. Now, this girl, she was a slave. She had owners. And suddenly, she found out, they found out that the source of their income, through the magic of their slave, has stopped. So, they accused Paul and Silas, went to the magistrates. Paul and Silas were sent to prison, chained, after a big beating. What's interesting is that in the jail, Paul and Silas, instead of complaining about their condition, about, instead of asking, God, did we miss your calling? If we went up to Asia, probably we wouldn't have ended up in this jail or any other jail. But instead of doing that, they praised God all night. And at midnight, God made this miracle, caused an earthquake, the doors were flung open, and the jailer, thought that the prisoners escaped. So he tried to kill himself. Paul and Silas quickly stopped him and said, we are here, we are here, we have not escaped. And because of this, the jailer asked the beautiful words, what can I do to be saved? And Paul and Silas said, Believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you and your household will be saved. And they got baptized. When they left the prison, instead of Paul hanging around, he was wisdom. He didn't claim he's the super apostle and he has power and he can command this and rebuke the other, you know. Instead of doing that, he used wisdom and left Philippi and went to Macedonia. When he went to Macedonia, the first thing he did as it was his custom, he went to a synagogue. Not for the prayer, not for the reading of the Torah, but to reach the Jews for Christ. Remember, the principle of the gospel is the Jews first and then the Gentiles. We studied this in the book of Romans in chapter 1. But we also see that the power of the gospel is for everyone. And it has the ability to save all those who believe. Thessalonica was a major city. It was an industrial city. It had a Deep port, which means deep water port, which means big ships could go there. So it was quite a rich city and a busy city. And in this city, there were about 200,000 Jews. So one can understand that there was more than one synagogue where one could go, but Paul chose or was led to a particular synagogue where he preached the gospel. So he preached the gospel, and many Jews were saved, including Gentiles that believed in Judaism. They are called God-fearers in the scripture. And among those people, there were also women of 
high standard or high levels in the society. Now, for some reason, the church at some point in time decided by misinterpreting scripture that women are not to be preachers and are not to have special positions in the church. Actually, found out, we found out last week when we were, or the week before, when we were discussing Romans chapter 16, how many women are mentioned there, and they had also official positions in the church. The reason I'm saying this is because when the gospel is being preached, it's being preached to both genders. Man and woman. We don't believe in other genders, and therefore I will not include them. I will include only man and woman, those who are biologically actually man and woman. What's interesting in this passage that we read is the way Paul approached this church. In verse 2, we read, Paul went in, that means in the synagogue, as was his custom, and on three Sabbath days, he reasoned with them from the scriptures. Now, we need to notice some things here. He preached to them on three Sabbaths, which means three worship services, three weeks. So, as usual, as um, biblical scholars are famous to do, start to argue what those three weeks mean? Was it actually three weeks? Was it three weeks and then he was kicked out from the synagogue, which was another something he was, Paul was used to? Or it was just a simple time frame as a literal device? We can't know. And we're not going to solve this problem that nobody solved in 2,000 years. But we know for sure, though, that the time Paul spent in Thessalonica before he had to run away again, he taught the, ter the church nearly all fundamental doctrines of Christianity, which we will be meeting, we will be studying, we will be referring to in the coming weeks. Paul and his team made sure that these Jews hear the gospel from what the scripture is saying. And this is very important for us today. There is so much extra biblical literature that people are very quick to quote thinking they are quoting the Bible, quoting what someone read on Facebook, someone that seen some preacher on YouTube, and they don't study and read the scripture for themselves. And therefore, people are gullible for several misguided teachings that are around today. Something that even Paul said, if someone, even if we come with a different gospel, even if an angel appears to you and says something which is different from what we have already said, let him be accursed. That's how much scripture is important. 
which brings me to also bring into attention that the book, the books to the Thessalonian church are probably, probably the first two books that were written in the New Testament. However, there are other scholars which have also their point to say, no, it was Galatians. For us, the way we are going to approach our study will not make any difference. However, what I quoted just a, a minute ago, the fact that Paul was saying to the Galatians, if someone tells you something different than what we have already said, which would be in the time frame of 48 and 55 AD, cannot be added. Anything else can be added with that. So Christian doctrine in the first half century of the church was already established. And if we study the scripture, the letters of Paul, the gospels, and the other epistles, we realize we will be able to notice, we will not miss the false doctrines that are going around the airwaves and read in so many books today. But first, we must be grounded in the Holy Scripture. Another thing we need to look at at this passage is that on the three Sabbath dates, he reasoned with them. He used his logic. He used his intelligence. He used his knowledge of the Tanakh, or what we call the Old Testament. in order to convince the Jews who believed in the Tanakh, which we call the Old Testament, that through those books, they can know that Jesus Christ is the Messiah that they are expecting from the scripture, from the scripture. He also says in verse 3, Acts 17, verse 3, he says, Luke is telling us, Paul is explaining. The word explaining is a Greek word which refers to putting one thing besides the other. He was using a methodological approach to study the scripture. And that's why it's important to study the Bible and not read this and that and that. You need to study this.